Good day, friends. Welcome to God's Poetry Show number 51. And today, uh, September the 4th, 2017, just shortly after the announcement of the passing of American poet John Ashbery at the grand old age of 90, um, I would like to uh, dedicate a short poetry show in his honour. And uh, not that I've uh, neglected his work in the past. I've perhaps read, <laughs> ah, read too much for some folks' taste, I would think. But um, a monumental achievement is his uh, life in literature. From sometime in the 1970s till I think there was a book out just last year. I seem to recall it being uh, written up in The New Yorker um, with the usual... Uh, what on earth is he talking about now, type um, assessments. And certainly his work uh, gets more uh, referentially obscure as the years go on. Not that it started out simply to begin with, but um, it's a challenge for many people. And a challenge a lot of people just can't even be bothered taking, I should think despite his uh, strong sales and wide distribution. Um, I've always enjoyed it, right from when I first discovered, um, what was it, the Tennis Court Oath? One of the early ones. In the 80s, I think. And um, to me, you, uh, you, don't, you experience his poetry. You enter his realm and you live in it. And you don't seek expl explication or uh, resolution, shall we say. It is a visit to a foreign land in which one can be uh, quite easily enchanted. Um, this book, Shadow Train, Poems by John Ashbery, 1981. Um, 50 poems in all, 50 pages, all uh, 16 lines, four stanzas, and um, I've always been a sucker for formal elegance, and this book has it in spades, and I think it gets, because it's short and almost understandable, I think it gets passed over for the more uh, sort of weighty obscurities of the later years. And um, so I want to focus on this book entirely in this short tribute to Mr. Ashbery's um, oeuvre and uh, unique contribution to late 20th century and early 21st century poetry in English. Um, definitely a Wallace Stevens influence, no question about that. You can read uh, a poem from Wallace Stevens' first book in the 1920s and um, if you didn't say who it was, you might actually think it was John Ashbery. But, um, you know, we all have roots, all poets have roots. I'm going to start with uh, Paradoxes and Oxymorons. This poem is concerned with language on a very plain level. Look at it talking to you. You look out a window or pretend to fidget. You have it, but you don't have it. You miss it. It misses you. You miss each other. The poem is sad because it wants to be yours and cannot. What's a plain level? It is that and other things, bringing a system of them into play. Play? Well, actually, yes. But I consider play to be a deeper outside thing, a dreamed role pattern, as in the division of grace, these long August days without proof. Open-ended, and before you know it, gets lost in the steam and chatter of typewriters. It has been played once more. I think you exist only to tease me into doing it on your level. And then you aren't there, or have adopted a different attitude. And the poem has set me softly down beside you. 
the poem is you. Another chain letter. He had had it told to him on the sward where fat men bowl, and told so that no one, he least of all, might be sure in the days to come of the exact terms. Then each turned back to his business, as is customary on such occasions. Months and months went by. The green squirky of the dandelions was falling through the hoop again, and no one, it seemed, had had the presence of mind to initiate proceedings or stop the wheel from the number it was backing away from as it stopped. It was performing prettily. The puncture stayed unseen. The wilderness seemed to like the eclogue about it, you wrote and performed, but really no one now saw any good in the cause or any guilt. It was a conspiracy of right-handed notions, which is how we all become partners in the pastoral doffing, the night we now knew. A prison all the same. Spoken over a yellow kitchen table, just a ticket for these recycling minded times. You've got to show them who you are. Just being a person doesn't work anymore. Many of them drink beer. A crisis or catastrophe goes off in their lives every few hours. They don't get used to it, having no memory. Nor do they think it's better that way. What happens for them is part of them, an appendage. There's no room to step back to get a perspective. The old one shops and thinks. The fragrant bulbs in the cellar are no use either. Last week a man was here, but just try sorting it out when you're on top of your destiny, like angels elbowing each other on the head of a pin. Not until someone falls or hesitates does the renewal occur. And then it's only for a second, like a breath of air on a hot and muggy afternoon with no air conditioning. I was so scared then. Now it's over. It can be removed like a sock and mended. A little. One for the books. Oh, nothing. The tent stitch is repeated in the blue and red letters on the blocks. Love is spelled L-O-V-E and is echoed farther down by fear. These two are sisters, but the youngest and most beautiful sister is called Forward Animation. It all makes sense if you look at her through the clock. Now, such towns and benign legends are, as were distilled to produce this moment of silence are dissolved in the stream of history. Of her it may be said that what she says she knows, and it will always come undone around her, as you are thinking, and so the choice is still and always yours, and yet you may move on untouched. The glassy, still chill surface of the cascade reflected her, her opinions and future de-defining you, to be amused this way is to be immortal, as water gushes down the sides of the globe. Quam. Warren G. Harding invented the word normalcy and the lesser known bloviate, meaning one imagines to spout, to spew aimless verbiage. He never wanted to be president, 
the Ohio gang made him. He died in the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, coming back from Alaska, as his wife was reading to him about him from the Saturday Evening Post. Poor Warren. He wasn't a bad egg, just weak. He loved women and Ohio. This protected summer of high white clouds, a new golf star flashes like confetti across the intoxicating early part of summer, almost to the end of August. The crowd is hysterical. Fickle as always, they follow him to the edge of the inferno. But the fall is, deliciously, only his. They shall communicate this and that and compute fixed names like doorstep in the wind. The agony is permanent rather than eternal. He'd have noticed it. Poor Warren. Shadow Train. Violence, how smoothly it came, and how smoothly took you with it, to wanting what you nonetheless did not want. It's all over if we don't see the truth inside that meaning. To want is to be better than before. To desire what is forbidden is permitted. But to desire it and not want it is to chew its name like a rag. To that end, the banana shakes on its stem. But the strawberry is liquid and cool, a rounded note in the descending scale, a photograph of someone smiling at a funeral. The great plumes of the dynastic fly whisk lurch daily above our heads, as far up as the clouds. Who can say what it means or whether it protects? Yet it is clear that history merely stretches today into one's private gignol. The violence dreams. You are half asleep at your instrument table. But not that one. The works, the days, ah, uh, the weariness of the days gradually getting a little longer, turning out to be a smile, everything like that. And it does make a difference. Oh, it does. Because the smile is a different not us, ready to rescind, cancel, rip out the stitches of the sky. Then it warmed up. Oh, a lot blooms, gets squashed on the tongue. Where are you going? Who do you think you are? Crushed leaves, berries, the stars continually falling, streaking the sky. Can it be the context? No, it is old, and sometimes the agog spectator wrenches a cry from its own house. He thought, he heard. The Vegetarians, the last one in the book. In front of you, the long tables leading down to the sun, a great gesture building. You accept it so as to play with it and translate when its attention is deflated for the one second of eternity. Extreme patience and persistence are required, yet everybody succeeds at this before being handled the surprise box lunch of the rest of his life. But what is truly startling is that it all happens modestly in the vein of true living. And then that too is translated into something floating up from it. Signals that life flashed, weak but essential for uncorking the tone, and now lost, recently but forever. In Zurich, everything was pure and purposeful, like the red cars swung around the lake on wires against the sky, then back down through the weather. Which resembles what you want to do no more than black tree trunks do, though you thought of it. Therefore our legends always come around to seeming legendary, 
a path decorated with our comings and goings. Or so I've been told. John Ashbury, from time to eternity. God bless you, John, and may your sojourn be <laughs> plentiful and joyful. Gord's Poetry Show, number 51.